Welcome to the morning serve brought to you by TikTok. We have a massive day coming up with the women's final and we have the dream team here, Alicia Mollick and Yelena Dockage. Look, before we get stuck into the final, let's get a bit reflective over the last fortnight. We've seen so many great storylines. Who do you think has really stood out and we really need to keep an eye out for for the rest of the season? Alicia, I'll start with you. Uh, well, look, for me, obviously, it's the resurgence of um, Irina Sabalenka, uh, fixing up her serve, making the final hit, something she hasn't done before. The Fruvatova sisters, Brenda and Linda, they may not be well known now. They will at one stage. I'm pretty sure at some point in time they will reach a Sister Act Grand Slam final. Uh, Brenda, just 15 years of age, qualified here at the Australian Open. Linda, just 17 and made the fourth round quite incredible. I'm going to go with Thanasi Kokonakis. I think he's been impressive all summer, but that match against Andy Murray, almost six hours, I think he can take a lot out of that. I'm sure he was disappointed, but if he looks back at that match, that can really help him for the rest of the year. Um, obviously, the Aussies in the doubles final uh, as well, Jason and Rinky. I mean, that's incredible, so that's still to be played. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about potentially maybe Tsitsipas getting to the final here. That would be amazing because this is his fourth Australian Open semi-final. And uh, the two Two women, Sabalenka and Rybakina. I think they've shown just uh, what incredible competitors they are, players as well, and I think they're going to dominate for the rest of the year also. Well, there's so much to look forward to for the rest of the year because we've got you covered for all of the Grand Slams here on Nine's Wide World of Sports. You mentioned the doubles, Jason and Rinky. Alicia, what's impressed you most about this pairing? Oh, I love this result, and they're not finished yet. That's, I think, the exciting part is that the special K set the tone. Um, and if they can do it, why can't Rinky and Jason Kubler? And it's probably been the last 12 months is the most that Jason Kubler in particular has played on the men's tour. Now that his knees are slightly better, he's learnt to manage. But this is really the beginning of their careers. Having this success means they've now got the dollars to be out on tour, Yelena, with mm -hmm. professional setups and coaches as well. I think they can get it done. They're playing an unseeded pair. They're both incredible returners. Haven't played a heap of doubles together, but you can see their mateship on court really shining through. Yeah, I think the fact that they're even in the final here, they will take a lot out of this regardless what happens. We saw what they did for Nick and Thanasi last year as well. It can really help in, with your singles career also. They're both, um, you know, really good players. They've shown that. Uh, Rinky, obviously a little bit younger, so he'll, he'll have that opportunity. And just to be in a Grand slam final it doesn't matter if it's singles doubles or mixed to have that on your cv is incredible and it will give them a lot of confidence moving on well it's a perfect segue to our tiktok moment of the day because it is the incredible post-match interview with those pairing as they book their spot in the final is he more the leader or who does what in the partnership Oh, I don't even know at this point. I think we just kind of, yeah, just see the ball and hit the ball. Um, yeah, I don't know, no, no, to be honest. Well, don't you change your thoughts. He's young, Coops, you've got more maturity. Were you thinking the same thing? <laughs> it's funny because at some stages we're just yelling at each other, you know, like I don't even know what he's saying. I don't know what I'm saying. We're just yelling. So, <laughs> like, there's, there's heaps of energy and we sort of, uh, you know, we both play better when there's more energy. Than all right, time to get stuck into the main course now. It is Arena Sabalenka and Elena Rabakina in the women's final. Ladies, is this what we expected? Are you excited? What are your initial thoughts? Well, I'm excited for the serving because it's going to be impactful. It's going to be massive. We're going to see plenty of aces, unreturnables. I can't remember the last time we've had two players over six foot tall in the women's final. Both incredible athletes as well. The biggest difference in what separates Sabalenka and Rabakina the most, I think, is their demeanour on court. Rabakina is very cool and calm. Sabalenka shows a little bit more emotion. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of serving into the bodies. We're going to see a lot of big hitting. I actually think we're going to see a lot of tennis through the middle of the court, sort of challenging each other that way. But in a sense, they're kind of clones of, uh, of each other. But again, nerves, anxiousness, preparation, Rebecca has been there before, hasn't she? Sabalenka, it's very new, the Grand Slam final. So who can handle the pressure better? I mean, time will tell. Yelena, do you think given it is Sabalenka's first final, she's been to plenty of semis and she's played in, in big moments before, but given it's a final, do you think the nerves will genuinely play a part? 
Yeah, look, I think both of them will have nerves, even Rybakina. Yes, she's been there before, she won Wimbledon. But in, in that match and that experience, uh, it, it all went by so quickly. She even said, I just want to play the match and get off the court and get it over and yeah. done with, because it was her first time there. So it is different for her, but it's, I still think there will be nerves there. For Sabalenka, she's been in the semifinals four times. Now she's been able to break through, get to the final. We always knew she had that capability. She's done a lot of work to get here. But also, she has won Grand Slams in doubles before, and that really helps. So she's been there on the big courts, that big occasion, playing in a Grand Slam doubles final. It will help her. I think they're both really fearless, though, at the end of the day. Yes, the demeanor is different. Rybakina doesn't give much away emotionally. Sabalenka, yes, she does. She'll show a lot of emotion. But I think, ultimately, they are great competitors. That's what's going to come through. And they will both really seize this moment. Alicia, you mentioned the serve with Sabalenka and she has done a lot of work on it, but would you say that's still an element of weakness there in her game? Well, the biggest test is yet to come mm -hmm. in the women's final and she's, she's a biomechanist. She spent a lot of time on that particular area of her serve. She's cleaned it up, still serving a decent number of double faults, but they're good double faults mm -hmm. and, and they're good hits and she's missing well. But when you add in perhaps some not so great memories of last year's Australian Open, we've got to remember... Last year, Sabalenka was using her underarm serve because she didn't have the full confidence in her regular serve. But it'll be a huge test for her. I think she can get over that hurdle mentally with her serve. But, you know, is her game going to match up and be bigger than Rabakina? Because that's going to be the test. Sabalenka has sailed through this event, not losing a set. All of a sudden, she's coming up against pretty much a clone of herself who can hit the ball just as hard, sometimes harder, <laughs> So it's just yeah. going to be an incredible match. Elena, given they are both such powerful hitters, do you think we're seeing, I guess, a, a new generation or a change where this type of game is going to start dominating more or these are the, the women that are going to be winning the Grand Slams with the most powerful... The, <laughs> Powerful game. Yeah, it kind of already is, isn't it? I mean, Iga Sviontek as well, and uh, I think we've seen that over the last few years. But, yeah, for both of them, they're actually coming up um, against the type of game that they haven't come up against this tournament. They're both such big hitters off the ground, and they both actually have big serves. Sabalenka has really cleared up her serve. The first serve is massive. We know Rybakina, she's got the biggest uh, average in the tournament at 182 k's an hour for the first serve. That's bigger than Serena when she won here in 2017. 50% of her first serves are unreturned for the tournament. So it's massive serving and massive hitting. And I think for both of them, they are going to try and dictate the points early. Who will do it better, but at the same time be measured because you have to keep those unfor unforced errors down. But yeah, it, it's a match where we literally do have two of the biggest hitters on tour in the final. Let's get stuck into Rabakina. And we've heard a lot about her story, but even more so over the last fortnight, she couldn't, her parents couldn't afford one-on-one -on -one coaching when she was younger and she had to have uh, more group training sessions. How great of a story is it that she has gone through that journey and she's on the biggest stage of all now? That's what makes sport so great hearing these stories, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure she's full of appreciation now for what she has and what she has access to. Her family are here with her at Melbourne Park and you could see the big smile on her face in the post-match interview yesterday. So, you know, perhaps other stars aligning for Rabakina like they did for Ash Barty. I, I did see a twinkle in her eye yesterday, but um, it's a great success story. Um, clearly a woman who possesses a lot of poise mm -hmm. and talent and really has been unflustered this whole event. And Yelena, you mentioned in that call the team she has around her with the, the coach, the full-time hitting partner, physio, how much does that help? How much has that helped her take her game to the next level? It does. It helps. And she's had a, a coach in the past with her full time, but now she's got a whole team. Yeah. And that's what I love because players are sometimes when they're doing well, maybe reluctant to change things or to add things to their game and their team. And I really see that as such a positive with her. And she's still only 23 years of age. So she knows exactly what, what she wants to do, what she wants to invest in. And that is a fitness coach, a physio, a hitting partner, a coach 
coach, she's got a whole team around her. And I think a lot of uh, the really, really top players and champions and Grand Slam champions have that. If you look at Novak Djokovic, if you look at Nadal, it does take a lot of people and a lot of hard work behind the scenes. So I really love that. Another person um, on the women's game who does that is Iga Sviontek. So these two young women are so um, aware of what they need to be better, but they're also looking for those one percenters. And that's what wins you Grand Slams. Could you see either of those two players overtaking Sviontek as the world number one in the next 12 months, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, they possess not just the game style, but the consistency um, on tour throughout the year. And they're also, they can be adaptive to different surfaces. The fact that they hit the ball so big, their service speed is right up there. I feel like that's a great matchup for all surfaces, even clay. It's probably another surface they love moving on, but when you hit the ball that big, it doesn't matter who you're playing against. So I'm looking for probably, as you mentioned, not just the dominance, but there perhaps might be a bit of a rivalry starting between the two women, Sabalenka and Rabakina here at the Australian Open. This could be the start of big things to come. It's going to be a cracking match. Let's look at the keys to victory. Yelena for Rabakina. What does she have to do to get the job done? I think she has to con continue serving really well. And if her percentages are up there with the first serve, I think it, is, it will be really tough for Sabalenka. It's been tough for everyone in the tournament if, when she's served well, which she has done. She's got the consistency. She's got the pace. She's got the accuracy as well. And she's got the variety. So she has to keep that going. Uh, the second serve, that's where Sabalenka will look to attack and she loves to step in. So for me, Rybakina, that will be key for her. And also just holding her uh, baseline. I think she has to be aggressive like she was against Azarenka as well. She, uh, for me, has enough margin for error to still be aggressive, but controlled aggression and measured tennis. And that's what she has to do. She really spread the court well against Azarenka and made her feel uncomfortable and like she wasn't in position. She'll have to do that against Sabalenka as well. And for Sabalenka, the key? Look, I think the first key for Sabalenka is to bring her emotion early in the match. So I'd like to see a big, loud come on in the first game, not wait until the third or fourth game. Because when she starts to get vocal and outwardly um, open with her emotion, I think she plays better tennis. Uh, for Sabalenka too, I think really critically important that she has a good first serve percentage because I really wouldn't like to see her having to serve too many second serves because that's an area we've seen in the past that can be a little bit iffy. So for Sabalenka, those two areas are critical. Thirdly, to stay down low on her forehand. I think the way that Rabakina hits the ball, it's going to be low, it's going to skid through, and she's shown that she can be really physical. But the most important thing for me is the emotion and showing it very early on. Because Rabakina, we have to remember, really tempers that. She's pretty quiet. So I feel like that's where Sabalenka can potentially draw the crowd in as well. And if you had to tip a winner, I know it's hard. Who are you going with? I'm sticking with my gal, Sabalenka. Elena? Rybakina for me. There I stuck with her yesterday. <laughs> Not a lot of people did uh, against Lazarenka, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going with her. There we go. One each. We absolutely love it. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Surf. Thanks to TikTok. And don't forget, you can catch all of the action for the women's final on 9 and 9 now.